The 15 mark comprehension at the back of paper two for AQA A-level biology is notoriously one of the hardest questions on the entire A-level. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking you through my exact strategy of how I approach the comprehension questions so that you can do exactly the same thing in paper two and try and get as many of those 15 marks as possible. Hey everyone, and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. And in this video, I'm going through everything comprehensions, my top tips and how to get as many marks as possible on this. Now, if you do want even more advice on the comprehension, because let's face it, it's 15 marks of that paper, which is a big chunk, then let me tell you about the one hour lesson that you can actually watch, which is the recording of the Easter boot camp that I did. In that one hour, I go through exactly how to answer the application question with a modeled example, and you get a workbook with modeled examples, the mark scheme, examiner's feedback to help explain the mistakes students made and how you can avoid those mistakes. And if you do want that, then I'll link it in the description below so you can get your hands on that full hour comprehension lesson. But for now, let's get into the key facts about the comprehension. Number one, it is 15 marks. So there'll be a selection of questions linked to the comprehension. Collectively, they add up to 15 marks. It's on paper two and it is right at the back of paper two. After the text, it always then says, use the information on the passage and your knowledge to answer the following questions. So essentially they are all application questions because you're having to use the text and your knowledge to be able to answer the questions. It's usually 15 to 20 lines worth of text and they number every five lines in the paragraphs so that they can then direct you to which lines to look at specifically when you're answering each individual question. And then lastly, the questions tend to be application, but also I have seen maths questions come up linked to the comprehension as well. So those are the key facts. Next then, let me go through my key strategies for answering the comprehension questions before I do a modeled example for you. So the first thing I recommend is read through the entire block of information but as you read through highlight as you go and the sorts of things I'd be highlighting are what you think might be a key term or key hint at a topic that it might be linking to. So highlight the information as you're reading through it and then linked to that my second tip is annotate as you go. So some of the highlights I might not have an annotation because it might be fairly obvious I've highlighted enzyme just to point out to myself that this topic is going to be about enzymes where it might be linking to transcriptional factor enzymes for example but annotations are when you might have a bit of information where I stop and pause and think what is the relevance of that sentence and I'll try and work out which topic it might link to or if it's to do with an experiment I might work out is that the independent variable is that the dependent variable is it a control variable is it a controlled experiment so I start to consider the information I've been given and try and work out what is the relevance of them giving me this fact or what bit of information does that link to. Now that'll make more sense when I do the worked example with you very shortly. Tip number three is do not start on the comprehension. It is at the back of paper two. It's worth 15 marks. It should take about 20 minutes, but I do not suggest you start on it, which that might sound obvious because it's at the back. But the reason I say that is my tip for paper one, which has already happened now, is start at the back on the long answer questions. But I do not recommend that for the comprehension because it is one of the hardest questions on the paper and it's mainly application. So you are better off saving it to the end when your brain is already awake and active and warmed up. And also it means that you aren't going to maybe panic and spend loads of time on it and run out of time on the rest of the questions. So save it to the end. Ideally you should have 20 minutes left when you get onto the comprehension. And then my final tip is apply all the same strategies that I've talked to you about in my application videos because these are basically all application questions. So if you haven't seen my application skills video then I'll link it up here definitely watch that so you know the four key tips of what I recommend for how to approach all application questions to get full marks so those are the key facts those are the key strategies let's now go over to me answering some of these questions to model it for you so you can see how best to apply it and improve so let's go through this example then and as I said I'm going to be going through it with the workbook that comes with the one hour lesson I won't go through the whole thing because obviously that was a one hour lesson 
lesson. So I'm going to skip past some of what we already talked about and get to the practice question. So let's go through this example together. I'm going to go through what I would highlight and annotate and why from the block of text and then just go through this first question. But as I said earlier on, that if you are interested in having a go at more of these, then you can get the comprehension lesson and you've got the full pack of three example comprehensions with the mark scheme, common mistakes and explanations as to why that would be a mistake. But I'm just going to go through this first part with you, the information and question one. So let me get the highlighter at the ready. North American black bears can hibernate for up to seven months without needing food or water, relying on fat stored in their bodies from the summer. So the things I'd be thinking about here is if they're hibernating without needing food or water and they've got fat stores, yes, this is year 13 um, content, um, but I'd be linking it maybe to somehow to respiration. I'd be thinking, so um, if I was going to annotate onto this one, I'd be saying food and water, glucose is required for respiration, um, fat stores, so if you run out of glucose, then you can hydrolyze the triglycerides into glycerol, which can be used in the Krebs cycle. So if I was going to annotate something, I'd just write respiration, glycerol as a respiratory substrate. Then we've got during hibernation, their heart rate drops from an average of 55 beats per minute in the summer to 14 beats per minute and their metabolic rate decreases by 75%. So again, if we're thinking about metabolic rates, I just write again, respiration here, um, and link into the 55 beats per minute, I might just make a note to myself, control of heart rates, um, and thinking about the fact that the heart rate is going to drop, linked to the fact that there's lower respiratory rates, meaning you need less glucose and oxygen being transported. Next then we have uncoupling proteins. Now this is an unfamiliar term, so I'm just going to put that in highlights so it would stand out to me if I needed to come back to it. And we're told they're present in many mammals and they help mammals to maintain a stable body temperature during hibernation. So I'd highlight here and annotate homeostasis. These proteins are found in the inner mitochondrial membrane so I'd highlight that and write oxidative phosphorylation because that's the stage that happens there. In fact, it happens on the electron, um, the electron transport chain is those proteins embedded within the membrane. So I'd annotate that. And it acts as a proton channel during chemiosmosis, but they do not produce ATP. So what I'd be thinking here is the proton channels, that's where the energy released from those electrons moving along pump the protons to the other side of the membrane in chemiosmosis. But if we're told that it doesn't end up in the production of ATP, I'd probably uh, write a little note to myself here, just question mark what happens to the energy then. If the energy is not being used to make ATP, what is it being used for? Then the last paragraph, in the mountains of North America, snowshoe hares change their fur colour from white to brown as winter turns to spring. So if they're changing from white to brown as winter turns to spring, the sorts of things I'd annotate here would be adaptation for survival, um, maybe some concepts of natural selection, maybe something linked to inheritance as well. However, earlier snowmelt due to climate changes has reduced their survival rate. So yeah, again, I definitely link this to natural selection, which yes, that is a paper one topic, but speciation is paper two. So it might be more linked to speciation. This color change known as molting occurs when new fur grows in. Recent research shows that within a population, snowshoe hares molt at different times which may be key to their survival. So if they're molt at different times, key to their survival, yeah, I think that's adaptations, natural selection, maybe speciation. Use the information in the passage so you always have that sentence. So um, suggest and explain how black bears are able to hibernate for up to seven months without food or water, which is lines one and two, and it's a three mark question. So we then look back at what we've highlighted and I was saying, thinking about um, linking it to respiration, um, those fat stores could be hydrolyzed, 
The triglycerides are hydrolyzed into glycerol and the fatty acids and the glycerol could be used in respiration. So that's what I'd be using as part of my answer for this. But let's have a look at, you can always pause and have a go at this yourself. I'm going to go straight on to what the mark scheme is and look at the common mistakes and explanations behind it. So first of all, there was one link to the concept of respiration that we said. So the fat is used in respiration. Um, then we've got less energy or food stores required due to a low respiratory rate. So we talked about that at the beginning when we said that annotations would add. Then you've got the gluconeogenesis. So that's the description that I was giving, that the glycerol from the lipids could be used. Then other concepts we've got. So I actually didn't address the water, which is what this bit here is talking about. Maybe they've got a long loop of Henle, so less water is lost. Water is provided as a product of respiration. Maybe they don't urinate as much. They're not going to have as much evaporation. So that's one bit that I didn't actually talk about um, was addressing the water side of things. But then we've also got the low surface area to volume ratio there. So common mistakes. Students attempted to describe gluconeogenesis, but very few did this successfully. Most confused this process with glycogenolysis. So just an explanation here that gluconeogenesis is the creation of glucose from a non-carbohydrate molecule. Glycogenolysis is the hydrolysis of glycogen into glucose. And the reason this question it had to link to this was in the information they told us they rely on fat stores, not glycogen stores. So that's how you knew it had to be gly uh, gluconeogenesis, not glycogenolysis. Then we have several features of hibernating bears were mentioned, including reduced movement, fat insulation, and their reduced surface area to volume ratio. But the significance of these features were rarely explained. So the question said to state and explain. So you had to give the reason why and not just the feature. So again, if you did want to have a go at more of these, as you can see, I'm just scrolling through at speed. You've got the help information at the start, and then you've got all of these examples that you can have a go at with the mark scheme and the explanation in the comprehension lesson linked in the description. So that is it, my key tips and strategies of how to answer the comprehension questions and some modeled examples. And as I said, if you do want even more practice and help on this, then check out the link in the description where there is the one hour comprehension lesson with the workbook, which you just saw me using some of it there in that recording. But for now, best of luck for paper two. I will be doing a last minute tips video for paper two in a couple of days, so don't miss out on that. But for now, best of luck with your revision and I'll see you in a couple of days.